Prediction loop failure. You see it coming, the coffee cup teetering on the edge, the full glass next to your elbow. You lock eyes with the danger like it's a movie in slow motion, and then you knock it over anyway. Prediction loop failure happens when your brain simulates an upcoming action and still lets it happen. Your motor system plans movement slightly in advance. Meanwhile, your perceptual system flags a problem. But those two don't always sync. The brain sees the future mistake, even simulates it, but doesn't override the muscle memory already in motion. It's a disconnect between recognition and inhibition. You know what's about to happen. Your brain even throws up a warning preview, but without strong enough urgency or friction to halt the action, you follow through anyway, as if the preview was part of the plan. Tip of the tongue. You know the word. You can feel its shape in your mind. You know how many syllables it has. You even know what letter it starts with. But when you open your mouth, all that comes out is static and shame. The tip of the tongue phenomenon happens when your brain retrieves most of a word's information, but not the actual word itself. It's like the brain grabbed the folder, but not the file. The concept, context, and even sound structure are loaded. But the final step, lexical access, is missing from the chain. This glitch usually happens with proper nouns or uncommon words because those are stored less redundantly. If you forget the word air fryer, your brain can still reach it through kitchen thing or that noisy cube that makes fake fries. But forget the name of that actor from that one movie and you're left with a blinking cursor and a slow descent into madness. The failure comes from a mismatch between recognition and retrieval. You can picture the actor's face, the scene, the soundtrack, but not the name. The shape of the memory is there, but the label won't load. The harder you try, the worse it gets. Your brain tightens its search criteria and locks out access. That's why the name almost always comes back at 3 a.m., long after you've stopped caring. Semantic satiation. You're writing something perfectly normal, the word knee, let's say, and then out of nowhere, the word looks completely fake. The letters are wrong, the spacing is weird, you're suddenly convinced you've invented a nonsense word and your brain refuses to accept it. This is a form of semantic satiation, when repeated exposure to the same word or image starts to break down your perception of it. Neurons involved in recognition start to fatigue, and the brain's confidence in that pattern begins to fall apart. The result is visual dissonance. A familiar word starts looking alien, and your internal dictionary turns its back on you. It doesn't just happen when you're writing, either. Repeat any word enough times, take milk, for example, and it stops sounding like language and starts sounding like a mistake. You'll question whether that's what we've always called it, or if you just invented a noise. Your brain relies on fluent pattern recognition to make words feel real. Break that rhythm, and the brain breaks with it. Post-task memory wipe. You put on deodorant, or maybe you didn't. You unplug the curling iron, lock the front door, close the garage. At least, you think you did. But five seconds later, you're halfway down the block, questioning whether any of it actually happened. Post-task memory wipe happens when the brain treats a completed action as a background process, something handled automatically, without storing a clear memory of it. Once the task is done, your brain clears the space to make room for what's next. The result? You're left rewinding the moment in your head, trying to remember if it actually happened. This is especially common with high-frequency tasks, the ones you do often and on autopilot. The brain doesn't bother to encode a detailed memory because it assumes you'll do it again soon. It values efficiency over certainty. So you check and double-check and triple-check, not because you're forgetful, but because your brain genuinely didn't bother to save the file. Freudian slip. You're talking to your boss and you accidentally say, love you, before hanging up. You meant thank you, or maybe bye, but your brain chose chaos. That's a Freudian slip, when your mouth reveals something your conscious brain didn't plan to say. Technically called parapraxis, this happens when two competing neural signals overlap, what you meant to say and what your brain associates with the situation. The result is a verbal misfire, where parts of different speech plans merge and something unintended and often uncomfortably revealing comes out. Not every Freudian slip is a secret confession. Sometimes, it's just word proximity. You call your teacher mom because both live in the same mental filing cabinet. Authority, routine, attention. Your brain grabs the wrong folder, and your mouth runs with it. But sometimes it is a little telling. You meant to say, that was a bold move, but it comes out as, that was a bald move. Now the person's wondering what you really think of their haircut. 
And honestly, so are you. Deja vu. You're deep in conversation with someone you just met and suddenly, it hits you. The exact way they said that sentence, the pause, the room. It all feels like it's happened before, only it never did. That's deja vu, the eerie, involuntary feeling that you've already experienced something that's actually happening for the first time. It's a perception glitch, where the brain mislabels the present as a memory. One theory says your brain processes the same moment twice, once subconsciously, then again a split second later with full awareness. When that second version arrives, your memory system picks up on the faint echo and wrongly tags it as a repeat. The moment feels familiar only because it was just seen, not remembered. Another theory points to a neural misfire in the medial temporal lobe, particularly the hippocampus and surrounding regions that manage familiarity. The circuitry that usually flags past experiences fires off at the wrong time, making a brand new moment feel like a memory, even when no memory exists. It's not a psychic premonition, it's not proof of a past life, it's just your brain playing a strange version of double-take and tricking you into thinking you've been here before. Misplacing object in plain sight. You're staring right at the thing you need, your keys, your phone, the charger, but somehow, you don't see it. You look everywhere, you check the counter twice, then, five minutes later, it turns out it was on the counter the whole time. This is a failure of visual attention, not eyesight. Your eyes may land on the object, but if your brain doesn't expect it to be there, it filters it out. Vision isn't just about receiving information, it's about interpreting what matters. If the object doesn't match your mental search image, your brain treats it like background noise and moves on. Context matters more than clarity. If you're looking for your black phone and it's sitting on a dark granite countertop, your brain might literally blind itself to it. And then your mom or your partner walks in, points right at it, and says, it's right there. It feels like they've been gifted with some magical object-finding power, but really, their attention just isn't being hijacked by your search bias. Your brain prioritizes what it thinks should be relevant and ignores the rest. It's the same reason you can miss a typo in a sentence you've read ten times. Familiarity makes your brain stop checking. The object isn't hiding. Your attention is. Accidental Thought Swap You're halfway through a sentence when your brain suddenly tries to change lanes two thoughts, one mouth. You end up saying something like, I need to charge my dinner. This glitch happens when your brain is juggling multiple speech plans and accidentally merges them. You were about to say, charge my phone, but we're also thinking about what to make for dinner. Your brain tries to say both, and your mouth catches the crossfire. Your brain doesn't generate speech one word at a time. It builds entire sentence structures in advance. When two of those structures start competing, pieces get swapped, spliced, or overwritten. The result is a sentence that's grammatically correct but conceptually broken. It's a multitasking error in your language buffer. And even though it makes you sound like you've lost your mind, it's incredibly common, especially when you're tired, distracted, or already thinking about what you're going to say next. False memories. You remember exactly where you were, what you were wearing, who was there, what was said, you'd swear on it, but none of it actually happened. False memories aren't just bad recall. They're confident, vivid recollections of things that didn't occur. Your brain generates them using the same systems it relies on for real memories. That's what makes them dangerous. You don't just think they're true, you know they are. Memory isn't a recording, it's a reconstruction. Every time you recall an event, your brain pieces it back together from scattered fragments, sounds, visuals, emotions, context. And every time you recall it, the memory subtly changes. Details get smoothed out, swapped, or inserted, especially if you've talked about it, imagined it differently, or heard someone else describe it. And if you repeat it enough, even casually in conversation, the version you're saying becomes the version your brain saves. The repetition strengthens the false details until they become the memory. Eventually, it hardens into a clear, confident version that may be entirely fictional. And because it feels real, your brain files it under truth, often permanently. Sensory misrouting. You're driving at night, trying to find a street sign. It's dark. You're squinting. So naturally, you turn the music down. That makes no logical sense. Your ears aren't blocking your eyes, but your brain acts like they are. This is sensory misrouting, when your brain tries to improve performance in one area by reducing input in another, even when the two aren't connected. You're not being silly. This is how your brain manages limited cognitive resources.
When the task load rises, your system starts muting the noise, literally and figuratively, to conserve bandwidth for whatever matters most. In reality, lowering the music doesn't improve your vision, but your brain's cross-modal attentional system assumes that fewer distractions will sharpen your focus, and it doesn't always care if the logic checks out. It's the same reason you instinctively turn things down to remember directions or pause a video to answer a complicated text. It's not synesthesia, it's just your brain misfiring its own priorities and deciding in that moment that volume is the bottleneck. Reading without absorbing. Your eyes read the entire sentence. You reach the end of the paragraph, you maybe even turn the page, but you remember nothing. This is what happens when your visual input runs on autopilot, but your attention never shows up. You technically read the words, your eyes tracked each line, your brain saw the sentences, but comprehension never kicked in. In other words, the lights were on, but nobody was home. It's not a reading problem, it's a focus allocation failure. Your brain decided some other internal process, a thought loop, a distraction, a random memory, mattered more than the text. So the reading got demoted to background noise. You kept going out of habit, like hearing a song you're not really listening to. This is why rereading the same paragraph five times doesn't help. It's not your memory that failed, it's that the memory never got created in the first place. If attention is the gatekeeper for learning, you never walk through the door. Repeating a story you forgot you told. You're halfway through a story, confident it's brand new, when your friend gives you that look. The one that says, yeah, you told me this already. And now you're trapped, too deep to stop, too embarrassed to keep going. This happens because your brain doesn't always tag memories with who heard them. It remembers the event of telling the story, but not the audience. So when you retrieve the memory, it feels like you've only thought about telling it, not actually said it out loud. It's a glitch in what's called source monitoring, the brain's ability to track where memories come from. You might vividly remember a conversation, a thought, or a scene, but not whether it was real, imagined, or already spoken. To your brain, thinking about telling someone a story and actually telling them can feel almost identical. The more vivid or rehearsed the memory, the easier it is to misfire. So you press play again, unaware that your audience already sat through the premiere. Forgetting mid-sentence. You're mid-thought, mid-sentence, and then nothing. You know there was a point. You know you were heading somewhere, but your brain drops the thread like a clumsy juggler, and all you're left with is a blank space in your skull. This kind of memory wipe happens when your working memory, the mental scratch pad where temporary information gets held, overloads, or gets interrupted. Your brain was holding your thought like a tab open in a browser, but something, a noise, a sudden distraction, or just a stray intrusive idea, close the tab before you saved your work. And the worst part? You often feel the shape of the thought. You know it was important. You can sense its urgency or its cleverness. But it's gone. Your brain just quietly ejected you from your own conversation. Frequency illusion, also known as the Bader meinhof phenomenon. You learn a new word or buy a new model car, and suddenly, it's everywhere. Billboards, articles, casual conversation. You can't help but wonder, was this always here? That's frequency illusion. Once your brain flags something as newly relevant, it shifts your attention to it. It doesn't actually appear more often. You just start noticing. The brain's pattern detector is hypersensitive to novelty plus repetition. That combination lights up your awareness system like a beacon. So when something new enters your mental database, whether it's a rare animal, a slang term, or a medical condition, your brain highlights every future sighting as significant, even if it's just coincidence. You're not manifesting it, and it's not a sign from the universe. It's just your brain updating its search algorithm. The doorway effect. You walk into a room and stop cold. Wait, why did you come in here? This isn't a memory problem. It's a context shift. Your brain chunks information into location-based packets, and crossing a physical threshold, like a doorway, can trigger it to flush the current working memory and prepare for new input. It treats the entry as a reset point. New room, new task. The information wasn't lost, it was shelved. But now, it's been nudged out of reach, just far enough that you can't grab it. So you stand there, confused, until the original trigger, a visual cue, a smell, a thought fragment, resurfaces, and the memory clicks back into place. That, or you go back into the room you came from, and voila, you remember again.
Your brain doesn't see a doorway, it sees a scene change, and sometimes, the plot of the last one gets left behind. Still here? Then your brain hasn't totally betrayed you. Yet. Might as well subscribe while it still remembers how.